Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about Williamson Ether Synthesis. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So we know what an ether is. It is a, uh, it's a, it's a functional group with an oxygen atom bound to two alkyl groups. And so uh, now that we know what an ether is, we want to figure out some ways to synthesize ethers. And uh, one way that's very common is the Williamson ether synthesis. And it's actually extremely straightforward mechanistically. There's not too much going on here. All that we need to do is we start with some alcohol and we're going to do an acid-base reaction. So we need to deprotonate that alcohol. And uh, a very common uh, base that we're going to use is sodium hydride. And the reason is this, we don't want any competing chemistry. All we want to do is deprotonate this alcohol. That's all we want to do. And hydride is great at doing that. And uh, what happens is once this hydride grabs that proton, we've got hydrogen gas that's just going to bubble up and leave solution. And it's not going to interfere. It's not going to do any more chemistry. Uh, so that's why this is an extremely common base uh, that is used for Williamson ether synthesis. Sodium hydride, hydride is going to grab that proton. We're left with the alkoxide. Now, an alkoxide, uh, we know, certainly can do SN2. And so why don't we just do SN2 on some alkyl halide, in this case, ethyl bromide. And we can kick that off. And here is that new bond that we formed, right? We have formed a bond. And we have tacked on these two carbons right here. So those two carbons got added on there. And now we have an ether because we do have, uh, we have an ethyl isopropyl ether. We've got an oxygen bound to two alkyl groups. So once again, mechanistically, extremely straightforward. All we are doing is deprotonating an alcohol. We're doing an acid-base reaction with an alcohol to get an alkoxide. And then that alkoxide is going to do SN2 on some alkyl halide, and we're going to get an ether. So in terms of, um, terms of sterics, obviously this is going to work best when either or both of the alkoxide and the alkyl halide are relatively unhindered. In this case, we do have a primary uh, alkyl bromide, so that's an ideal candidate for this reaction. As you start adding more steric bulk to either of these, uh, either of these reagents, it's going to limit your yield. It's not going to work as well. Um, but once again, that is our general overview for the Williamson ether synthesis. So now that we understand the reaction, let's just go over a couple of examples, uh, some things that uh, look like maybe something you'd see on a test. We do need to be able to look at a substrate and draw a potential product, or maybe even see a product and draw what the substrate must have been. And so this is a little, the, the only thing that's trickier with this than some of the other reactions, whereas with some of the addition reactions, we can identify a reagent, and we know that the only time we see that reagent is for uh, oxymercuration, demercuration, and so we can immediately make that uh, make that um, that correlation there. This is a little tougher because we're not seeing that. Maybe with sodium hydride we might recognize it, but that just means we have to think critically, right? If we see this kind of situation, we've got we've got this alcohol, and we know that hydride is going to do an acid-base reaction, right? We can look at this. We know that the only acidic proton is that, or even remotely acidic proton, is the hydroxyl proton. And so we know that we're going to deprotonate there, and then the resulting alkoxide is going to attack ethyl bromide. So all we have to do is put this on this oxygen. So let's draw that product. Right, we know that when we do Williamson ether synthesis, we're going to make the alkoxide. So after the deprotonation, we've got O minus. We've got the alkoxide. And then that is going to go ahead and get, two, uh, get that two carbon fragment on there. So that is our product there. All right. So once again, right, hydroxyl, hydride, acid base, resulting alkoxide will have this two carbon, uh, we'll do SN2. We'll get that two carbon fragment on there. So that's an ether that we've made. Now, looking at this one, what if we need to go backwards? Uh, this is really not any more difficult. We're just going the other direction. We're saying that we did some Williamson ether synthesis to produce this ether, right? So what did we start from? Well, what is the, the, what is the alkyl halide that was involved in the SN2 step? Well, that's this right here. We have got this four carbon fragment, right? One, two, three, four carbons. That is, the, that is the alkyl halide that was involved in the SN2. Where is that in the product? Well, that's obviously this, 
right? It's not that it's not that five-membered ring. So we know that an alkoxide attacked this to get that. That means that this was before it was off the molecule, and this was the alcohol. So the rest of the molecule was the alcohol. So that means that we must have started from cyclopentanol, right? Cyclopentanol reacted with sodium hydride. We lost that proton, and then that alkoxide attacked right there, and we got that four-carbon fragment on to make our product. Okay, so that's how that's the logic we want to employ in the opposite direction. Let's look at one more slightly interest, uh, slightly more interesting situation. Let's say we're doing this in. Uh, we can even do this just in aqueous base. Let me just show that uh, oxygen hydrogen bond right there. So let's say we're doing this in aqueous base. We've got hydroxide, we've got a hydroxyl. We know that that's going to be a pretty easy equilibrium. If those collide, uh, we're going to be able to transfer that proton. So let's say we go ahead and get that proton. And now let's make that alkoxide. So we've got this situation here. So what can happen here? This is a situation where we've got an alkoxide and an alkyl halide uh, on the same molecule here. So we can do actually an intramolecular reaction. We can have this alkoxide go ahead and attack right there, and this molecule will cyclize. Now, so how many, uh, how many members in the ring, how, how many members will be in that ring? We've got one, right, that oxygen is going to be in it, two, three, four, five. We know that this is going to attack here, and we're going to make a five-membered ring, right? So that will be this. That is our one, two, three, four, five. This was the carbon that had the chlorine on there, but that got kicked off. So this is our way, this is the, a way that we made a cyclic ether. So these are some different examples, now that we understand Williamson, Williamson ether synthesis, some examples of what we can do in both the forward and reverse direction. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Thank you.